Uh, welcome to this uh, presentation from AFCRI. I'm, I'm Bob Wells, I'm the director of uh, AFCRI and uh, this uh, session is to provide uh, information uh, around our uh, call of um, applications for a third round of Centres of Research Excellence. This presentation will um, give you some uh, information about the background to AFCRI for those who might not be familiar with it, uh, more information about uh, our um, uh, selection criteria, uh, our processes uh, and some information about support that we can offer for example through uh, the Pickard liaison, of, uh, liaison officer Peter McGuinness who is uh, based at AFCRI uh, and also in the department can give more information about uh, potential links with the um, uh, Department of Health and Ageing. So uh, to be begin proceedings I'll hand over to Re Rebecca Pallavicini, our business manager who will talk about the, uh, the background of AFCRI. Thank you. Okay, thanks Bob. And um, welcome everyone to this, which is our third information session about um, centres of research excellence. I know many people will probably know this information, um, but we thought it would be useful to go through again the background to AFCRI so that you can understand where the centres of research excellence fit into our current program. Um, AFCRI has been operational um, since 2003 as part of an um, initiative of the Australian Government. Um, it was commenced as part of the PICRID strategy, the Primary Healthcare Research Evaluation and Development Strategy. I always get that a bit wrong, but sort of anyway, the PICRID strategy. And information on the PICRID strategy can be found on our website as well. So there are three main goals of the Institute. Um, the first is to strengthen the knowledge base of primary healthcare by conducting and supporting research and developing an extended pool of primary healthcare researchers in Australia. The second is to facilitate the uptake of research evidence in primary healthcare policy and practice and to conduct research that is relevant for the development of um, practice and policy and to get that research um, evidence into policy. And Peter will talk more about that later, how we go about getting research evidence into policy. And the third um, overarching goal of the Institute is to enhance research capacity in um, primary health care through strategic partnerships with both national and international groups. And the development of the Centres of Research Excellence is really sort of one of the key aims is to um, focus on that research um, capacity building in the Australian um, um, setting. Um, so we have developed um, links with Australian organisations, we've developed links with international organisations, we have partnerships. Um, one of those partnerships, and you can find more information about this, is with um, uh, an organisation in Washington called the Robert Graham Centre, and that's just an example of one um, partnership that we have developed at ANU, AFCRI ANU, and the Centres of Research Excellence that have been established already are developing partnerships um, with national and international organisations. And we're, we're developing a network, what we're calling a, um, um, an AFCRI network. Now this slide just um, shows um, the Pickard strategy and how it all fits together up until the end of this year. Um, so we've got the Department of Health and Ageing um, and through um, the oversight of the department um, um, they have um, they oversee the Pickard strategy and I, I'll just remind you that this will be changing at the end of this year but it is current as of today um, where we've had, well the department has had the um, RCBI through 26 university departments. Um, AFCRI um, is funded through this strategy as is the Primary Healthcare Research and um, Information Service, PICRIS, which is um, based at Flinders University and you'll all probably um, have your raw profile and your um, e-bulletin from PICRIS and we work closely with PICRIS. And then there are two other components which are current as of today, the um, um, senior and mid, uh, the, the um, mid-career fellowships and the NHMRC fellowships. 
Um, now, as you know, the RCI, RCBI component is changing as of 2012 and funding will go into further research, um, further centres of research excellence, which is why we're here today. So the current contract that we're operating on um, from the Department of Health and Ageing commenced in 2010. Um, goes through to the end of 2014 with an extension for um, management of um, centres of research excellence. Um, we have a focus for these years of this current contract and that will be to fund research that will contribute to the Australian Government and COAG's reform agenda to build on research excellence through the generation of increasingly high quality, robust evidence for Australian primary health care, to build on knowledge exchange, expertise and activities, and that comes back to um, translating knowledge into policy. Um, and Peter will talk more about that later, how we do that, because that is a, a sort of a major um, component of the work that we do. Um, to continue to build primary health care research capacity in Australia and that is being done through a range of mechanisms and successful centres of research excellence do have an obligation to build research capacity and that is a, an area that will need to be addressed in your application for a round three um, centre of research excellence. Our focus in this contract is building on multidisciplinary research in primary health care um, with, um, um, and you can find more information on how we're doing that on our website. Um, the current reform agenda is something that we are focusing on and um, a bit later in this presentation we'll be talking about our research themes. And the research themes that are going to be the research themes for this current round of centres of research excellence, and the research themes that we are focusing on in this next round, are looking at gaps where there are gaps in the current research that supports the reform agenda. And the focus, uh, the final dot point for our focus in this um, um, contract period is to provide evidence, knowledge, and specialised expertise to inform decision making for primary healthcare systems and services and the systems and services is something that I'd just like to underline there. Um, so we're, we're focusing on excellence, developing um, research excellence in primary health care and um, Chalando will talk more a, a bit later about um, the themes that we're going to be focusing on and Bob will talk more about that but we're looking at informing the national primary health care strategy. Um, a Healthier Future for All Australians, the National Health and Hospitals Reform Commission report, the Primary Health Care Reform in Australia and the National Preventative Health Care Strategy. Just a little bit on our governance, which I think is quite important for people who are applying for um, not just centres of research excellence but for any other streams that we might be, um, stream opportunities that we'll be advertising for in the, in the future. Um, we have a research advisory board, which is an independent board. It's made up of members um, with a wide range of expertise in primary health care. I think we have most um, disciplines covered. Um, we certainly have um, practice nursing, um, psychology, um, sports physiology, um, general practice. Um, information on our board members is available on our website. Our research advisory board actually determines the research priorities for AFCRI and the whole of the AFCRI network. Um, members are chosen through because of their expertise, their skills and expertise, um, and are actually um, approved by the minister and then appointed by the, um, the ANU. The board um, sets up expert review committees to look at um, um, applications for not just our centres of excellence but for our stream applications as well. Those expert review committees are chaired by a member of the board. We have independent national experts on those um, review committees and we always have an international expert on um, 
the committee as well. For the centres of ex centres of research excellence, we have two international experts that sit on our um, expert review committee. Um, the role of the board, or the ro the role of AFCRI ANU, sorry, um, is that um, we have a role. We have a um, our um, role is to implement that research agenda that the board sets and then to engage in knowledge exchange with key stakeholders including policy makers, politicians, researchers, healthcare providers and professional groups including non-government organisations. Um, consumers, we have a range of networks with consumer organisations and we deal with the media. Um, I won't read out this um, slide because it, it's, it's basically just um, summarising in a, in a diagrammatic sense what I've just spoken about, about how the board is established. Um, research questions are set by the research advisory board and then that flows down to expert review committees and then back up to the board. I should just add that our expert review committee don't actually make the decisions, they make recommendations which then go back to the whole of the research advisory board um, to determine the outcome. Okay, now I'm going to hand back over to Bob who's going to talk about the research themes and the selection criteria for the round three centres of excellence. So the aims of the, of the CREs and the uh, research themes. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the major research themes for the centres of research excellence are, are three. The first of all, access and equity. Uh, secondly, prevention and management. Uh, and third, quality, governance, performance and sustainability. And these themes um, uh, are drawn actually from the, the um, first uh, Australian primary health care strategy. So they're, they're not something we've made up ourselves, they're, they're part of the, uh, the strategy that the, um, the governments of Australia have endorsed. The research domains that we have um, are quite uh, comprehensive. We have Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, we have access to primary health care, adolescent and child health, chronic disease management, e-health, mental health, multidisciplinary teams, primary health care models and delivery, primary health care performance, practice nursing, preventive medicine, rural and remote primary health care, self-help organisations and workforce. So you can see we, we, cover, we cover the field in terms of the areas uh, of uh, research interest for AFCRI. In terms of the Centres of Research Excellence, uh, the selection criteria are first of all innovation and research approaches, uh, second knowledge generation, uh, third knowledge translation and possible implications for policy and I'll, I'll elaborate more on that uh, further on in relation to this round of CREs. Uh, fourth research capacity building which Rebecca's already touched on. Uh, and uh, finally, collaboration and engagement with priority groups. So looking at those uh, knowledge translation and possible implications for policy, um, we, we, our interest is um, from AFCRI that the, the mandate we have through our funding agreement with the, with the Department of Health and Ageing is um, to pr undertake research that will support uh, uh, improving the, the system, the primary health care system, support the national health reform agenda uh, and, and lead to be better service delivery. So it, it's not directly a clinical uh, in, uh, re research approach, it's, it's to do with the system, health services uh, and, and policy issues. So we'll, what we're looking for in, the, in that particular criterion is the, the applicant's understanding of the whole of system issues. So it's not just uh, how GPs might function or how nurses might function in primary health care or that sort of thing. It's how the, the, all the bits perhaps come together. Um, and we, would, we clearly feel that, that applicants should demonstrate the, the, their thinking around that by showing us what they see might be the policy and implementation matters that would uh, be addressed in their research and what, what issues might turn up as, as their research progresses. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, 
And we, we want to be able to demonstrate the potential benefit of research models that people might want to test as part of their, their CRE program uh, for the uh, population outcomes, for service outcomes at the population level, um, uh, if not for the whole uh, of Australia, but at least for you know, population groupings uh, within, within the broader population. Um, and to demonstrate uh, potential systems issues that might arise from the research model they would like to, uh, to test. For example, uh, is, is it a model that would be able to be funded within our current funding arrangements or would it require qu quite you know, significant departures from how we traditionally have funded primary care in Australia? Uh, issues of accountability, how would it fit into the new accountability structures with Medicare locals, um, the agreement between the Commonwealth and the states to improve if you like, in, uh, closer integration between primary care and acute care, uh, and how, how will the governance models that we, we have in place in the Australian system be affected? So th they're, for us, they're very serious questions because it's uh, having the, the perfect model uh, on its own is, is, is not sufficient for that to be something that could be picked up and used as part of the reform process. Uh, so, just a bit of background, we, we already have uh, five CREs uh, uh, funded. Um, uh, from the results of the first round of CREs, we funded three, which were announced in January 2011. Uh, these are CRE for Accessible and Equitable Primary Health Service provision in rural and remote Australia, CRE in Indigenous Primary Health Care Intervention in Chronic Diseases, and a CRE for building quality governance, performance and sustainability in primary health care through the clinical microsystems approach. The second round of, of CREs, uh, we, which we announced in September 2011, um, two CREs, first CRE for prevention of chronic conditions in rural and remote high risk populations, and second a CRE in urban Aboriginal child health. So I'll, I'll now uh, ask um, Chalandu Makuka, who's our um, research manager in AFCRI, she will take us through the application process. Thank you, Robert. Um, I will now take you through the round three ap application process. And um, in round three, we expect to find around about five centres of research excellence. And um, to mention that the Research Advisory Board um, reserves the right to fund any centres or may fund less than five if the applications are not of good quality, um, so that subject um, to the outcome of the assessment process, um, AFCRI may call for fresh proposals in the high priority areas, um, as what happened in this case, um, where the Board has drawn attention to about um, seven um, research themes, and these are finance and economics of primary health care, Medicare locals, oral health care, primary health care workforce, child and adolescent health care, alcohol abuse and associated conditions, overweight and obesity. So if we go into a little bit more detail, into some of the issues uh, to be considered for research around these themes. Um, for instance, in finance and economics of primary health care, um, we could look at uh, policy implications um, of financial incentives, for instance, to providing quality primary health care and other mechanisms um, of providing cost-effective uh, primary health care. Um, these days we're talking about the efficient price of primary health care. Um, when we look at Medicare locals, considerations um, can be given um, into generating information or recording best practice models for Medicare locals and how effectively to link them um, to the hospitals, the state-based state health departments, as well as NGOs. Um, in the area of oral health care, um, research could look at availability of um, 
um, health services, um, access to oral health care services, uh, their management plans and population outcomes, um, national dental care program um, in the um, example of Medicare and issues around in, uh, surrounding cost, implementation, legislation, education, training as well. Um, another area um, in terms of the sub themes is the primary healthcare workforce and um, issues around here perhaps could be um, the primary healthcare workforce of the future for instance uh, in looking at the numbers and the skills um, the skills mix and how um, these different um, uh, roles um, and, and how they relate to each other in the primary health care setting. Um, in the area of child and adolescent uh, primary health care, we have gaps currently, and the gaps um, are to do with the children transitioning uh, from childhood into adolescence, that this period um, has a gap that primary health care is not focusing at looking um, at conditions in those um, transition periods. And so um, research could look at how primary health care can focus um, in these areas. As well as that, um, as the children transition from one phase to, it, to the other, um, their you know, social and, and um, uh, health or you have to record it, so. Um, another area to look at would be the social and um, economic factors that affect child development and adolescent health in the um, gaps. And so um, research could look at, for instance, the interactions between the social um, and the primary health care services. Um, two other areas um, in the, in the sub-themes are contribution of primary health care towards prevention and management of alcohol abuse and associated conditions, as well as um, contribution of primary health care towards prevention and management of overweight and obesity. So those are the sub-themes. Um, in looking at the funding, um, the funding hasn't changed from round one and two. Um, the centers will be funded um, for about two um, and a half million Australian dollars over four years. However, to mention that um, for round three, um, centers of research excellence will be um, eligible to receive an additional $500,000 um, if they focus on, um, uh, if they have a focus um, in the rural areas. So the extra funding will be more for capacity building um, of research um, in the rural areas. <clears throat> um, in terms of the application process itself, um, this stage has been broken down into two stages. And round uh, stage one um, will consist of um, early core, uh, core of proposals. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, stage one will be the core of expression of interest. And this has already gone out uh, in the first week of November. And um, the next stage will be the expert review process um, that should take place around about mid-December where we have the expert review committee rank uh, the expressions of interest so that those high ranking um, expressions of interest will be asked to submit for proposals. And this should happen um, around about mid-December. Um, in the expression of interest phase, <clears throat> we are asking applicants um, to give us a synopsis of their proposal and in doing that to link um, how they articulate um, the AFCRI mandate. And so what we did was to go back to the AFCRI mandate and craft out four criteria 
that we expect applicants um, to address. And these are, um, we want to see how uh, they are going to increase knowledge generation, um, how they will contribute uh, to policy development and implementation, um, how they will increase research capacity, but as well as that show um, evidence of strategic partnerships. In the second stage, um, which should commence mid-December after uh, high-ranking um, expressions of interest are uh, asked to submit full proposals. We expect the closing date um, to be around about April. And um, an expert review process, again, will take place around about June. Um, and they will rank the proposals and give recommendations um, to the research advisory board so that the research advisory board um, we will announce the new centers of research excellence in the same month in June uh, 2012. Um, once the centers have been awarded, we expect that um, contracts can be signed within 30 days. And um, pursuant to this, um, there will be a reporting requirements. Uh, basically, that will entail um, reporting after six months, uh, reporting the year's progress, and together with the year's progress, um, the um, yeah, implementing institutions will have to tell us um, about whether they have published in that particular year, uh, what their student progress uh, will have been like for the year ending, um, knowledge transfer and exchange activities, and um, we expect that they should give us a detailed um, annual research plan for the next year. Um, as well as that, um, we, we will expect some verbal progress reports during the face-to-face -face meetings that AFPRI will um, uh, plan during the course of the year. Um, as well as that, uh, we will have teleconferences um, for the centers of research. Um, excellence and during these teleconferences we also expect some reports. At the end of the four years we expect um, the um, final fin financial acquittal report as well as the final report in a format um, that we call 1.3.25 and that can be found on the website. Um, just very briefly to go over the um, round three timelines. Um, we have had the call of expressions of interest in the first week of November, and today we are having the um, information session for prospective applicants. Uh, closing date for expressions of interest are the 9th of December uh, at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, Australian Eastern Summertime. Expert review assessment for expressions of interest should take place around about mid-December so that in the third week um, of December, the notification um, of the assessment process can be communicated to the applicants. And there we will open um, the application process to the to full application. Uh, full application. So we will invite full applications in mid-December. And the closing date um, for the full applications will be April next year in 2012. And um, the expert review committee um, should sit to consider recommendations. Sorry. The expert review committee will sit to assess um, or rank um, the proposals in mid-June and make recommendations um, to the research advisory board within the same month. Um, so that, I guess, by the end of June, we will have heard from the research advisory board um, which centers have been awarded. And we expect um, the centers of research excellence to commence operations um, in July 2012. Um, um, the expression of interest form um, is on the website, and so um, there's a link um, to the expression of interest form 
um, so that if prospective applicants um, would want to have a look uh, at what the form looks like, um, the link is there. And um, I will end here and I will give this back to Robert. Robert, thank you. Thank you, Chalandu. I'll now introduce uh, Ms. Peter McInnes, who's um, our, the Pickard Liaison Officer, who is uh, based at AFCRI and in the department. Uh, and uh, Peter's role is to assist in uh, the interaction between the researchers and the department. And uh, Peter will talk more about um, how he might be able to assist in terms of uh, information for potential applicants for this round. Peter. Thank you, uh, Bob. Um, the, I'm um, Peter McGuinness, uh, the Pickard Liaison Officer. Uh, I'm on secondment to AFCRI from the Department of Health and Ageing. And the purpose of um, my role is to enhance the department's working relationships with the primary healthcare research sector. And I'm uh, about supporting and promoting knowledge exchange and translation between the department and primary healthcare researchers and organisations. One of the key identified barriers to effective um, transfer of research evidence into policy is lack of interpersonal connections between uh, researchers and policy makers. Uh, I have uh, a key role in navigating uh, the connections between researchers and Department of Health and Ageing officers. Uh, as part of uh, this process, um, uh, I'm available to provide general advice uh, on um, knowledge translation strategies for your CRE application. Uh, I would urge you to um, make um, connections with the department through your existing um, contacts or if you need some support in navigating um, who you need to talk to in the department, uh, my details are available at the uh, end of this um, presentation. Uh, you need to contact me early if you want um, support in identifying or arranging, helping you assist, arrange um, meetings with departmental officers. Uh, it's important not to leave um, making connections with the department to the last week before submission of your application because uh, it, it, it takes time to arrange these meetings and you need to give the department a, a bit of um, warning. I can... Um, uh, recommend um, accessing uh, both AFCRI's uh, website and PICRIS's website for um, general knowledge translation and exchange advice. There are very useful materials um, both on um, PICRIS's website and on AFCRI's website. Um, and um, the, uh, the role of the department in this uh, process is not to um, um, be involved as, as an investigator or provide endorsement for your application, but it's about understanding um, the priorities um, of the department, the policy environment, the systems issues as the department sees them in terms of the, your research proposal. And it is very useful to speak to the relevant people in the department to um, assist you in framing your application around um, those issues. Right, thank you. Well, thank you, Peter. Well, that draws to a, a conclusion, our speakers. Um, uh, just uh, refer you now to um, uh, two sources of information. We have a comprehensive uh, question and answers uh, on our website from the previous two rounds of AFCRI funding. We will update that progressively for further questions and answers that come in uh, for this third round. We, um, we re require, if you have questions, you put them to us at director.afcri at uh, All questions will be uh, responded to and all questions and responses will be placed on the, on the uh, FAQ part of our site. Uh, we won't identify who asked the question, but we, uh, for reasons of um, ensuring that everybody uh, gets the same information, uh, we will put all the questions and all the answers. Um, and the, you know, the, the, as I said, the, 
the, the full list of questions and answers both from this and from the previous two rounds uh, will be available under the FAQ section of our website. Um, I, I stress that we can't uh, give, if you like, uh, one-off advice that only would be for one or one one applicant. A any questions, even if if you do come to us uh, with a, with an oral question, uh, we will translate that into an FAQ and it will appear on the website. So thank you very much. Um, you you have those um, uh, addresses on on this website, and uh, I wish you all the best for your applications. Thank you.